Hmm, this might might be a problem. Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Morphe Auction Company taking a look at a Bavarian model of 1869 Verder pistol, or lightning pistol. This is one of the guns that they're going to be selling in their upcoming February uh, field and range auction. And I thought it would be a great chance to take a look at what is mechanically a really cool gun that kind of got short shrift for reasons that are not its own fault. So a brief history of the development of this gun. It was developed by Johann Ludwig Werder, uh, went into military trials in 1868. Um, these were military trials in the Kingdom of Bavaria. Germany did not exist as a unified nation state at this point. That wouldn't happen until after the Franco-Prussian War in 1871. And so Bavaria had its own army and its own equipment. They tested this against a couple of other competitors of the day, um, including the Verndel, not to be confused with the Verder, uh, the Verndel was sort of a rotary drum trapdoor type rifle. They also tested it against the Berdan rifle from American Hiram Berdan. Um, the Berdan rifle actually was really pretty good. It was an early kind of a typical bolt action, rotating bolt, bolt action style of rifle. And the trials came down pretty much neck and neck between the Verder and the Berdan. And it ultimately came down to a personal decision by the young 23-year-old King Ludwig of Bavaria, who, taking a more personal interest uh, in the trials than was typical of royalty in the day, uh, specifically chose the Werder rifle for Bavaria's armed forces. Now, they would adopt this in three different forms, a standard infantry rifle firing a standard infantry cartridge, and then a carbine and a pistol, both chambered for a slightly reduced cartridge, because firing the full power rifle load in a handgun like this would have been unpleasant um, and not very practical. The idea was this breech system lends itself reasonably well to being shrunk down to a handgun size, which gives you a gun both potentially for cavalry if you want holster pistols, and also for some of the accessory or ancillary troops. Um, for example, this one is unit marked to the 2nd Artillery Regiment. Artillery troopers need to be able to defend themselves, but maybe you give them a pistol instead of a full-length rifle, since their normal day job doesn't require them to tote around a full-length rifle. Uh, anyway, we'll get into some of what happened to these in a moment, but first I'm excited to show you how this thing pulls apart, because it's really neat. So just for reference sake, the Verder rifle cartridge was 11 by 50, and it used a 386 gram, uh, grain bullet over 66.4 grains of powder. The pistol round was 11 by 35, so substantially shorter, and it used the same powder charge, but it used a 340 grain bullet, so a substantially lighter uh, powder, or a substantially lighter bullet. The way that this actually works is we have this currently ready to load. You would load a cartridge into the chamber and then manually cock the hammer. Doing that lifts the breech block here. This is basically at its core a tilting block uh, mechanism. Now this is actually cocking two springs inside because the first spring is the hammer spring. And when we pull the back trigger it fires. Notice we have a spring-loaded firing pin so the hammer rebounds. Nice safety mechanism there. Then you're left with this, and well, how do you get the empty case out? The answer is the front trigger, because there is a second spring in here that has been tensioned and is just waiting to be released, and it will pop the breech block down. When that drops down, it pops the extractors backward, just like that, and it rather energetically flips the empty case up and out of the gun. That leaves the gun back in this configuration where you can slot another round into it, cock the hammer again, and you're ready to fire again. And in trials in Bavaria with the rifle, granted not the pistol, the rifle of the same system, the Bavarian uh, committee was able to get 20 to 24 rounds per minute out of their rifle, compared to 12 to 15 rounds a minute for a Mauser 71, which granted came a little bit later, but more than 50% greater rate of fire. Hence the nickname that this got of the Blitz Rifle or Lightning Rifle. It really is a very cool mechanism. Now the coolness doesn't end there, because we're going to go ahead and take this apart. I will start by mentioning that to do this we want to start with the breech block down, because that detensions the springs. We're then going to take out this screw, 
There are a bunch of screws in this gun holding various parts together, but the only one we're concerned about is this one at the front of the trigger guard. We can pull that. We can then pop the trigger guard backwards, and it comes off. And then, pushing the, the lever down just slightly, the whole thing comes out as a unit, leaving this nice empty shell of a verter pistol. Looks a lot like a modern HK fire control pack, doesn't it? Well, this is from 1869, so slightly predates H and K. I can then take this side plate and just pop it off the side of the action, and presto, here's the whole thing. So I'm going to show you a little bit of this with the springs, but then I'm going to take the springs out before I try to do the whole thing, because if I try to actually cock this with the side plate off, parts will go flying. Um, what we have here, you can see when I pull the hammer back, I'm compressing this round or omega shaped spring, and when I lift the breech block, let's just take that out of the way, when I lift the breech block I am compressing this V-spring. So those are the two springs that you have operating. Now, oh, and I should point out, there is a third little flat spring right here, and that's just, that's a trigger spring. Um, and it also puts a little bit of force on the extractor here. But that one's less important. Pull that out, pull this out, and then I can show you the way this whole thing works. So when you cock the hammer, it's going to, these parts are going to interface, and that's going to pull the breech block up, that locks it in position um, with the, the breech face here right behind the cartridge, and the firing pin is in there. I'll show that to you in a moment. This is also, you'll notice, bringing this lever down so that this bar and this bar are touching each other. That is what's locking this in position. However, we have tension. We've squeezed this V-spring significantly together, and we have also tensioned this spring, giving us uh, force on the hammer and force on the breech block. When I pull the trigger, let's see, we've got. I have taken the trigger return spring out. We have two notches, sear notches, on the hammer. So there's my full cocked sear notch. When I pull the trigger, that comes up, which allows the hammer to pivot down. Notice that the breech block is still locked in the upward position by this. The hammer goes forward and it hits the spring-loaded firing pin, which you can see right there, and you can see the firing pin projecting out the front of the breech face. So that's going to fire the gun. And then you're in this configuration. In order to eject the round, whoop, I just did it accidentally. In order to eject the round, when you push this trigger forward, you're going to get to that point where this bar is no longer supporting the breech block, the V-spring back here is going to expand, which will push this down, which pops that down there. And I took off my extractor. Let me put that back on. So this was up like that. This comes down, and when it comes all the way down, it hits this bar coming off the extractor, which pops the extractor back like that, which throws the empty case up this little ramp now, and out of the gun. It is truly a really cool little system. So uh, there are a couple other little things that I want to show you briefly. Uh, one of them is that we have a serial number on this gun, 2002, and then we have a different serial number on all of these parts. And the reason for that is that this is an assembly number. So before the gun was actually serialized, finished and serialized, these trigger mechanisms were manufactured as units, and you'd want to put them together and make sure that all the parts fit and they all worked properly, do any hand fitting that was necessary. And once you did that, you would then number all of these parts so that they all stay together as a unit. Then when this unit is mated up with an actual gun frame, that's when the whole thing gets its actual serial number. So this whole serial number versus assembly number being different is not particularly uncommon uh, with military firearms. Um, even their, like some of the Arasaka models do this exact same thing. And if we look at the outside of the actual pistol here, you'll see uh, the 2002 on the barrel, the upper frame, and the lower frame. And then we actually, this is kind of cool, we have a unit marking here on the right side. This is the 2nd Artillery Regiment, uh, and then I believe that would probably be 2nd Company, 48th gun in the company. 
And just to recap for you, now that we have this all back assembled, cocked, ready to fire, breech locked upward, fired, ready to eject, opened and ejected. One last thing to point out, there is no safety on this design. Uh, this is, I believe, an aftermarket added safety. Not sure when those were put on, um, but there it is. And what that does is simply prevent you from cocking the hammer far enough to catch on the sear. So uh, you have to pop that out of the way, then you can actually cock and fire the gun. Through no real fault of its own, the Verter would actually have a pretty darn short service life. Um, only four battalions of Bata Bavarian troops uh, were equipped with these guns in time to use them in the Franco-Prussian War. They worked very well in service there, but they weren't there in particularly large numbers. After the unification of Germany, the Prussians, who pretty much ran the place at that point, uh, wanted all of the military forces under their control to standardize on some infantry weapons. And for an infantry rifle cartridge, that meant 11mm Mauser, which was substantially more powerful than the 11mm Werder round. They went ahead and tried to, well they did in fact, uh, rebuild the guns in 11mm Mauser. The problem was it, the, the action simply hadn't been built for that in the first place. It could have been, but it wasn't because it wasn't of course designed around that cartridge, and they had significant reliability problems once they made that rechambering. Cartridges stuck in the chamber, the extractor wasn't powerful enough to, to pull the brass out, had a lot of problems, and ultimately the uh, Verter rifles were replaced with Mauser 71s. So uh, the pistols of course never went through that rechambering because they were initially made for this shorter cartridge, and it wouldn't, there's no reason to rechamber them. Same goes for the carbines. So you don't have to worry about the, uh, if you have the pistol or the carbine, pistol like this one, you don't have to worry about it having been rechambered. It's still using the original short Verter pistol ammunition. Um, at any rate, I think these are one of the coolest and least appreciated of the early single shot uh, mechanisms, because they really are better than most of the other stuff that was out there. Of course they'd be quickly supplanted by repeating rifles instead of single shot rifles, but for the time being this was a cool gun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, you can see some more details on this as well as a whole slew of other guns that Morphe has uh, by tracking down their website and taking a look at their catalog. Uh, YouTube does not allow me to put that link in the description, so you'll have to go find it on your own, but it's Morphe Auctions, it's not that hard to find. Thanks for watching.